welcome to Psychic Medium, Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium and Channel. Okay, we're going to hit the ground running with the show um, and talk about a lot of different things today. First and foremost, if you would like to call in, the call in number is. I think, you know what, you guys, I, yeah, I don't even know if I put the right call in number on half the social media I put out because I am super dyslexic and um, nobody is here to proofread my stuff. So the actual call in number is 845-277-9131. And just like for the record, I'm not always dyslexic because I copy and paste a lot of things. <laughs> So I am probably dyslexic in those moments. I'm just not typing it out. But when I'm in a hurry or really nervous about something, I will get, I will talk backwards. I will literally say words backwards. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous is all I can say. But, you know, the number, if you are listening or watching and you would like to call in and ask a question about your life, career, finances, love, anything goes today. Today is anything goes. Even ask me if that guy is cheating. I might not answer it because I don't do cheating readings, but you could ask. If I get it, I'll give it to you today because today is anything goes. <laughs> um, <laughs> the the call-in number again is 845-277-9131. And um, that is not, if, if you want a private session, that's that's not how, where you would call. Um, you would go to my website, T-O-N-I-G dot I-N-F-O. It tells you everything about my hypnosis services, my healing services, and my readings. Um, and, then, and then you would call my business number, which is on my website. Um, so, okay, couple quick little thing dingas. Okay, so I, I've been being bombarded all morning. Like it's, there's a song going in my head and I think whomever this song is for, you're going to know immediately as soon as I say it or sing it or do whatever I'm going to do with it. Um, and again, I don't know how to sing. It's okay though. Um, but the song, the song is crazy. It's crazy because it's, um, you're going to know if your loved one on the other side is sending you this song. And it's, it's raining men. Hallelujah. It's raining men. And okay. So, um, and then the other song, I don't even know if these are the same two, this, these two songs are, the same song. I'm thinking they're not, but I'm hearing Gloria Gaynor. And then I'm hearing, at first I was afraid, I was petrified. Kept thinking I could never live without you by my side. <laughs> please wait, please don't make me sing more. But then I spent so many nights thinking apparently I have to hold first verse at how you did me wrong. Now I grew strong. I learned how to get along, but now you're back. <laughs> to bother me. Oh my God, let me stop. Okay, so you guys truly do not get this. Um, when they want to get a message through, I, if my mouth opens, it comes out. So somebody told me like a week ago, you need to stop telling people so much stuff about themselves. And I said, I don't tell anybody anything about themselves. I go, now spirit on the other hand, if it gets my mouth, it will not shut up. I cannot stop it from sending things through. It will be like blah, 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 blah. And um, I said, well, maybe they need to hear that about themselves. I don't know. I'm good kind of joking on that one. Anyway, um, so here's the deal. Those two songs came through. It's Raining Men and I Will Survive. So I have a feeling the same person is sending those so two songs, two songs, Uno Dos, Dewey. I think Dewey is two in a language. 
I, I'm God, I'm hoping it is um, to someone. And this person had, <laughs> as I flick, flick my wrist, a larger than life personality. Um, oh, God. Okay, so what I'm also seeing is someone who liked to be entertaining. And they're saying hi, and they love you, and they miss you, and they want you to know it meant the world to them. Whatever it is, it meant the world to them. Okay? I'm so grateful to be able to bring that message through for whomever that message was for. Okay. <clears throat> I want to say hello to everybody on YouTube. If you want to join us on YouTube, please come join us on YouTube. Um, you can join in on the private conversation in the chat during the show and pre-show. So the first person that showed up today on YouTube was Heather. Hey, Heather. Um, and then Jennifer showed up and uh, Terry. Terry said uh, he, pa he passed his boards, board exam. Congratulations, Sal is here. Love Sal. Sal is such a sweet soul. Jennifer is here. Um, Heather Fawn. Hey, Fawn. Uh, Jennifer again. Uh, a few of us have been spiritually guided to come. Yep. So, uh, okay. And then Genevieve. Hey, Genevieve and Cheryl. Thank you for being here. And I know there are people who listen to me. Um, Every, you know, religiously, Cindy and Jessica and Scott, Patrick, um, just so many people. I please do like it because um, it will be sent out for more people to see at that point. Now, if you don't, that's okay. You don't. You don't have to. Hey, Amy, how are you? Um, uh, but that's how YouTube works. They kind of go by as people like the show, they push it out. I, I'm only going to say that once during the show because I really want to focus on everybody who's online, everybody who's calling in. I want to focus on bringing messages to everybody. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for liking, sharing, um, for for subscribing. Thank you so much for watching. If And this show, okay, so a lot of people... I have to say this, like, at least I should be saying it at least once a week. This show does air on TV. Um, I record it on YouTube, and then it gets uploaded to WSCS and all of their streaming channels. It gets, um, so WSCS airs it and sends it out on all of their channels. And then Rude Rangers TV also sends it out on all of their channels equally. So this show does air on TV. And it does um, uh, air on on almost every podcast and on radio stations. Okay, just so everybody is aware of that. Hey, Stevie. And if you don't know who Stevie is, that's my youngest brother who he he I asked him what he wants me to say about him. He said, tell everybody, my name is Stevie Oliva, and I'm Downs, and I work. And those are his big things right now. So hey, Steven, I love you, bub. Okay, I'm going to go straight to colors. I'm so excited for everybody being here today. Um, I'm going to go to the first caller, who is 514, 514. Um, let me make sure my phone volume is turned up. What's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, Tony. It's Genevieve from Canada. How are you? Hey, Genevieve. Hey, Canada. How are you doing today? I'm doing phenomenal. It's getting colder here. The fall colors are gorgeous. Oh. Uh, my uh, daughter's, today's my daughter's birthday. And on Thursday, it's my birthday. So it's oh. going to be a gorgeous week. It is. You're both Libras. Ooh, that's a lot of scale balancing, a lot of justice, a lot of judgment, a lot of um, just being in that space of um, 
what's right, what's wrong, and trying to to be in that place of always being fair. That must be torture having two Libras. A lot of my really good friends um, are Libras. Scott's a Libra. Patrick's a Libra. I have a sister who's a, yeah, September 17th. She's a Libra. Um, I, I, I know a lot of Libras in my life that I just, I, I love the way they operate. I will tell you that. They're always looking for what's fair. And oh, by the way, happy birthday to all the Libras. So if I didn't catch you, I'm sorry. Okay, Genevieve, enough about that. Happy birthday to you and your daughter. I hope it's phenomenal and you have something special planned for yourself. Thank you. I have a question to ask you, my dear Tony. And it's not about me, but it's about um, my, as you know, my parents uh, have passed and I wanted to know because their spirit is still alive on the other side. And I know, um, and I would like to know as they're continu continuing on their personal journeys and their own passion, I'd like to know if you can tap in into what they are doing. It's great to know about us, but I'd like to know what are they up to? Is that possible? Absolutely. Oh my gosh, I love this. So yeah, Genevieve, you nailed it. Um, I made a post on Facebook the other day and the post said, um, like no, like everybody something, but everybody transforms. And, and I wish I could re remember the post right now, but we don't die, we transform. Our energy goes from being this solid state that we think we are to energetic state. But when we get to the other side, there are stations. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to channel this. So if you I, I really hope you like it. I really hope you enjoy this channeling. Um, and if anybody has questions about this, uh, please send your questions in or call in and I'll be able to channel more for you. Um, so once we get to the other side, we have stations, which are time blocks. And these time blocks on the other side, time is very different than it is here. And the time blocks are what they're calling as needed. Okay. So for example, if somebody needs a time block of three months or three weeks, that's what the time block will be. It's not set in stone. Just like here, things are not set in stone. So once somebody dies, once they pass and leave their physical body and they go into their energetic form, it's my understanding and from my three um, death experiences, um, we all go up. And trust me, um, I was not always this enlightened person <laughs> that I am now. I am not enlightened. Oh, I find that hilarious because I am so in the in the in the the balancing of everything. I am not as enlightened as as I should be. Um, but if I went up, we all go up. That's all I'm saying. Um, so it's a conscious choice. Um, our next step is just as much of a conscious choice as every step here. And so we go, we evolve up as we evolve up. And again, based on my experience, as we evolve up, when we, when we leave our body, we can stay next to our body for a period of time and assess everything going on. And then there will be a point and sometimes it's instantly. And sometimes again, it's a period of time we start going up in that transition of going up into the light. There is this unburdening. There's just this feeling of nothing but love. And it is definitely a feeling that we are supposed to keep while we're here on this planet or plane. But we get guarded and we get hurt. So we we go, we push that, um, that feeling away because we're afraid of that. Um, of being harmed, of being emotionally, psychologically, or physically harmed. So we're always on guard. We're always afraid. So once we get into the light now, once we're all the way up, 
Now, and I'm going to tell you the transition between your body and the light is where we do the shedding. Okay. We definitely do the shedding of everything that is not love. Um, and we have the choice. Some people, if it's your final exit point, you don't have that choice. But some people have the choice during that transition to stay um, as you're going through, you see family, friends, pets, and whatever it is that you may not have completed or uh, reasons why you might want to stay. And you get to decide if you want to go or stay. Now, if it's your final exit point, that will not be the case and you do not get that choice. Um, you go and if you're going to come back and it's going to be really hard on you, like you might have brain damage, they they let you know that and you get to make that choice and decide if you want to finish your work in this life or come back to a different place and finish. Okay, that's been my personal experience with my three death experiences. And now I will tell you, once you get to the other side and you stay, this is where I'm going on channeling. Um, <clears throat> when you get to the other side and you stay there and you're like, OK, that's my final exit point. Here I am. You get to just you get to the first thing people on the other side do is they try to help those they've left behind a heal from the pain and the suffering of losing them. Okay. So anybody who's suffering from your loss, they try to, in their energetic field, come in and help you recover from that. And in the beginning, I'm going to tell people something they don't that you might not realize. In the beginning, it's really tricky because when that loved one comes in to touch you, console you, comes close to you, you feel them so strongly and it's almost like torture. It's almost like torture. And that's when you break down and you could, the, the human will break down and cry and feel them so intensely and not know why they just bursted out and cried. It's because their loved one is coming very close to them to help them clear and heal the grief and give them the answers and the, our, our loved ones on the other side. Also, just because they're on the other side, it doesn't mean they don't want to like hug us and help us when we're going through that grieving process. The second thing they do right from the get, jump when they get over, if somebody can get the messages, they start like bombarding messages to that person, whether it be via dreams, signs, symbols, um, or just um, words or sentences popping in that person's head. And I'll, I'll give you a small example of that. Um, I, I'm going to try to make it really fast. When my mom first passed, um, and there's so much, I, so many stories I, I could tell about when my mom first passed. But one of them is when my sister and I were in my mom's apartment cleaning it, she had knickknacks and there were certain knickknacks. I said, Hey, do you mind if I take this? And my sister's like, absolutely not. Now there are seven children in this family. And the, after I got home, my mom let me know that she wanted those particular things to be for my three nieces on my, from this particular sister we were cleaning out the apartment. One of my brothers and everybody or most people have somebody in the family like this or a friend or somebody who will come in and they kind of are like, I want that. 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 And that is um, one of the things that happened during the clean out of my mom's apartment. And so these three things my mom made sure I took so that they could be given to my nieces. So that's another thing they'll do. They'll try to, if there's something they want to make sure somebody gets, they'll try to bring those messages through. And it's up to us to listen and be okay with that. There's no judgment on that at all. Now, the next thing they do is they try to let you know, and I know this is crazy and people, we when it comes to their service and their their thing, we want to do everything we can for them. They're like, don't waste the money. 
I'm not in that body. Don't buy the most expensive thing. Don't buy the most expensive casket. Don't don't buy this. Don't waste the money. Like they really have a new look on everything in the way what what happens in cemeteries and funeral homes and all of that good stuff. They have a completely different view of that now. Um, but then they work with us to help us transition into our next place of being and being without them, especially if we were very close to them. So let's just say there are things going on in our life, like we might be with the wrong person. Our loved ones on the other side, as soon as they get over there and they see the whole landscape, the whole plan, everything going on, they will work to make sure that if we're with somebody who isn't treating us well, that person will be removed or out of our life, even if they have to do it from that person's perspective. If there are things going on at work or this or that, they can now see everything and they work to make sure that we are in that good place. And, and all, the, all of our hidden enemies is what I like to call them, are being removed from our life, okay? At the same time, they're still trying to help us heal. And the, the faster we heal, and there's no right or wrong amount of time to be in grief or sorrow from somebody, that's, that's not a thing. There's no timeline. Um, but the faster we do, then they get to move on. They move up a little bit. They're always with us. Our loved ones on the other side are always with us. And then their next steps are to atone for anything they feel was unbalanced here, okay? So they might start bringing gifts or righting wrongs in whatever way they can for those who are left behind. After that, then they start doing what I call counseling on the other side, where they might, depending on who they are, what they did, and their choices, they might counsel those who need to elevate more. And that is a whole nother realm of what goes on on the other side. Um, okay, so that is some of the things they do, but they're, we are always, we and they are always working to have them and us evolve and move forward so that we can be in a space that um, we're moving up. We're just moving up and evolving. I hope this makes sense to everybody. And I hope everybody's um, appreciating this, um, this answer. It is something that is very um, different. And thank you, Genevieve. I'm so grateful for this question because I do think a lot of people wonder, what do they do over there? They're working just like we are. It's it's They're in their energetic form, working on evolving just like we do here. I, I hope that makes sense. Okay. And is there anything that I can do to help? Let's say my mom and dad or, or my stepmom or whomever, my grandparents, to evolve as well? And will this help me evolve to a higher vibration at the same time? Is there anything that I can do for yeah. them so that Absolutely. they get so higher for you, vibration that then will resonate on me and then will raise me up at the same time? Yes, absolutely. And for you specifically, the one thing I'm hearing is peace. So... And what they're giving me and what they're saying is they want to bring peace to you. Now, this doesn't mean peace between you and other people. This just means peace within you. You have peace. Now, you. everybody says, no, I'm over it. It's okay. But if it gets brought up in a certain way or you think about a certain thing and it upsets you, that means you're not over it and you're not in that state of peace. Like knowing everything happens for a reason, with a reason, and the way it's supposed to. And we don't have that control over it that we think we do. Um, or put it this way, we weren't 
treat, treated wrong. Um, there was no miss, uh, I, I'm not getting the word. There was no like mistreatment. Everything worked out exactly the way it was supposed to work out, whether it had to do with things or feelings or fights or treatment. Everything was exactly the way it was supposed to be. And they want you to really grasp that for everything in life, even though so many things happen that are seemingly unjust. So for you, everybody listening, re-listening, I'm going to do a clearing on um, peace. We are at peace. I get a no. And let's clear that to a yes. The biggest thing, you know, I can tell you our loved ones, Genevieve, your loved ones on the other side and everybody else's loved ones on the other side. The biggest thing I can tell you that they would want to tell us, and I know it seems, um, like such a frivial, fr fr frivial statement, but the statement is love, just love. Start with yourself and then allow that to expand. It doesn't mean literally going out. People get this and I, I think sometimes people might misunderstand what love is and how it shows up. Love is who we are, first of all. But second and more importantly, just because you do an act of, of service, that is not an act of love. And I'm going to explain this in a way that it should pop for everybody. If you go to church or you belong to an organization or you donate and you do that because you think you're supposed to tithe back or give back. That's not an act of love. That's a job. That's something you're doing because you think you're supposed to do it. When you do something for somebody, Paul did it right now. And we were just um, saying love, just love. That does, and it doesn't mean just, again, it doesn't mean just go out and love everybody out there. Um, it means to to for everybody something different, but it may mean understanding eventually that you are the love you're seeking. Okay, that's it. That's what they would want to say. Nobody can give you what you are not. Okay, nobody can give you what you are not. So if you are not love now, no matter how much love you get there's a wall or something around you that's preventing more from coming in but once you realize that's who you are what you are what you want then you will more uh, become that if you will i i hope that makes sense but peace they just want you the short answer is they want you to be be peace not so we think we're supposed to be at peace. We are supposed to be peace. We think we're supposed to be this. We're supposed to be, we're supposed to uh, do these things. It's what we're supposed to be. Okay. So I know this was a, a pretty long winded answer, but I really do hope it is helpful for you. Please know you are so loved by so many and that there are so many people on the other side trying to guide you and help you through this journey. So I hope this show was helpful and I look forward to seeing you on Wednesday. Thank you so much again. And have an amazing rest of the week.